welcome back to Cruising as Crew. My name is Lucy, and today we're going to be doing a Q&A. So, a few, well, actually a while ago now, I put something out on my Instagram stories and asked you guys to ask me any questions that you wanted to. And I've actually divided the questions into two categories because the questions that I received from you guys were either about working on a cruise ship, getting a job on a cruise ship, and then the other bunch of questions that I get were more t like for me and wanting to know about my experience. So in this video, I am gonna answer the questions about ship life and wanting to work on a cruise ship and then I'm going to do another Q&A video which will come out on Sunday which is going to be the questions that were more tailored for myself and my experience. But firstly I want to say a massive thank you to everyone who did submit a question. I really appreciate it. The first question that I am going to answer is can I work on cruise ships if I have a physical disability? The answer is yes, if this particular disability does not affect your work. I can't really say a definite yes or no because there is such a broad spectrum of physical disabilities. Some are gonna be a no and some are gonna be a yes. But the safest thing to assume is if you are still able to do whatever job you're applying for, with the disability you have, then it shouldn't affect your chances of getting a job on board. However, if the disability you have would affect your day-to-day -day work performance, then the answer is probably gonna be no. And also, like I said in my medical video, which I will link up here, the best bet is before you even apply, go to your doctor and ask. Say, look, I wanna work on cruise ships. Do you think I will be able to do that job with this disability? Nine times out of 10, if your doctor says no, it's gonna be a no from the ships. So before you even apply, go to your doctor and ask the question. The second question is, do you have to be a certain weight to work on Virgin Voyages like the airlines? So this question could mean two things. I took it to mean, do I have to be a certain weight for like looks reasons? Because I'm sure we all know when you go on an airplane and you see the air hostesses, they're all quite trim. They're all normally quite good looking, especially if you go on Virgin Airlines or you go on Etihad or Emirates. So in terms of that, no, for Virgin Voyages, you do not have to be slim or you know have a six pack to work on there they don't hire anyone based on their looks based on their weight the only thing when it does come to weight is you have to have a healthy bmi to pass your medical but that is the only reason that your weight would affect your job but no it's it's purely based on health okay so the third question i get this question so much is do you have to be able to swim to work on board cruise ships? The answer is no. You do not have to be able to swim to work on a cruise ship because unless something goes seriously wrong, you will not be entering the water at any stage. Even if there was an emergency on board, the idea is that you go into a lifeboat. So no, you do not need to be able to swim. However, from a personal standpoint, I do feel like you should have a basic level of swimming. So maybe go and have some swimming lessons, even if it's like two or three. You don't have to be a strong swimmer, but I would recommend being able to float. So for Royal Caribbean and p and I did not have to do an STCW qualification to go on those ships. But for Virgin Voyages, I did. And the STCW qualification includes a sea survival course where you have to get in the water, practice survival techniques, get in a lifeboat. So for this exercise, you do have to swim. And without passing this exercise, you do not pass the STCW qualification and therefore you cannot get on board. But even for this exercise in the course, you don't have to be a strong swimmer, but you do have to be able to swim. So, so having a baseline ability to swim is good and also even if it's not for your SCCW or anything like that you're probably going to be going to some really nice beaches and all of your friends are going to be getting in the water and swimming and trust me it's a lot nicer to learn to swim and look like an idiot in a pool when you're home rather than learning to swim in front of all your new friends when you join a cruise ship. I actually taught my roommate how to swim, my roommate Shasha on um, Royal Caribbean Legend. Oh my God, it was so long ago now. She couldn't swim. So at this time we were going around the Pacific Islands. I mean, that sea, there's no better sea to learn to swim in. So we would go to the beach and I would teach her how to swim along with some of the other girls. And it was great and we had a lot of fun doing it, but I know that she wished she could have swam before. So, 
just have some swimming lessons, three or four, just get a basic knowledge and you're good to go. Number four, I know I said I get the swimming question a lot, but this is the question that I get all the time. How do I apply? Can you please send me the link to apply? How do I do my CV? Where do I send my CV? I cannot tell you how to apply because there are multiple different cruise lines, multiple different agencies, multiple different jobs on board. You're from all over the world, so it's different depending on where you're from. So there isn't like one link that I can send you to apply. First you have to figure out what job you want to do on board. Then you have to research how to get that job. Depending on where you're from in the world, will you have to go through an agency or can you go directly through a cruise line? And all you have to do is Google cruise ship agencies, cruise lines, do a little bit of research and at the bottom of the cruise lines web page there will be a careers button. You press careers, you apply for the job you want and if the job you want isn't there you will have to go through an agency. So then you're going to have to research agencies and apply through the agency and then they will put you on a cruise line that they work with because usually agencies work with multiple cruise lines. So like me, I worked for Steiner, which is an agency that hires bar staff, and now I work for Harding Retail, which is an agency that hire shop staff. And those companies work with a multitude of cruise lines. So working for Harding, I could go to P&O, to Carnival, Silver Sea, Princess, Virgin Voyages, but that is something that you are gonna have to research yourself. I'm afraid, I wish there was one link, wouldn't that be amazing if there was? But there isn't, so you are gonna have to do your own research. Number five, how long after passing my interview will I have to wait to be placed on a ship? This depends on a few different factors. It depends on how long it takes you to get your medical, your STCW qualification, if you need it, your visas, particularly your C1D visa, if you need injections and any extra training you might need. After applying and passing your interview, you will be advised on which of those things I just mentioned you need to get, but some of them take longer than others. You know, sometimes it takes you ages to get a visa appointment. You might need to get a new passport. Obviously with the COVID situation, getting medicals isn't as easy as it was because medical centers, there has to be room, it has to be safe. So most of the time, the wait between passing your interview and getting on a ship depends on how long it takes you to get all of your paperwork together. The other factor is, is there space on the ship for you? So you might have got all your paperwork, but the ship that the company have allocated for you might already have your position filled. Let's say you've applied to be crew manager. So they will have to wait for the crew manager who is currently on board to finish their contract before they can put you on board. What these cruise lines do is they will hire a pool of people that can fill this position on a few ships because you just don't know what's going to happen on cruise ships. You know, someone might go on a ship and be scheduled to do a six month contract, but they might break their leg or they might fall ill or for some reason they might have to go home after three months. So they always need to have a pool of people that they can put into that position so that the business can keep running as smoothly as possible. So you might have got the job, got all your paperwork, but then it's a case of waiting for there to be a space on board. This is the most frustrating thing. I think when you're waiting for a job to start, but you're the reason it hasn't started, it's okay because you're like, it's fine when I get my shit together, I'll go on board. But when you're waiting on the company to have space, it's really frustrating because you just don't know whether you're coming or going. It's really difficult to plan for the future because you're like, well, I might go next week or it might be another month until I go. So these are the two main factors that will influence how long it takes you to get on board after passing your interview. So it's obviously really hard for me to put a time scale on it, but I'm going to say approximately six months from applying and passing your interview, prepare yourself for six months and hopefully it will be less. Question number six is when is the right time to apply? So going on from my last question and answer, you should apply as soon as possible. Let's say it is January and you know that you're not going to be ready to go until November, December, you should apply. It's going to take like at least six months before they're even ready to put you on a ship. But if you pass your interview and you tell them, 
I want to go in November, December time, the chances are that you will go when you want to go because you have given the cruise line so much warning that they can schedule you in advance. And instead of hiring you as part of that pool of people to jump in when needed, they will schedule you to replace someone who is finishing their contract in November, December. So basically, the more warning you give them, the better. It's less stressful because you have more time to get all of your documents, and as I said, you're more likely to go on a cruise ship when you actually asked to go on a cruise ship. And when you pass the interview, they will ask you, when do you want to go? They realize that you probably still have a job, you need to give notice, then you need to get all your documents. So my advice is apply as soon as possible. How long does it take to get a C1D visa? Again, it depends on where you're from. I booked mine for two weeks in advance. I mean, I got there in the morning and because I had a morning appointment, I was in and out within an hour. Whereas I know people who have appointments in the afternoon are sometimes waiting around for like six hours. So when you're booking your C1D visa, go as early as possible. And then it took, it took a month to come back in the post. Other visas that I've got, so I had to get like an Australian visa. These visas are all seafarers visas, just, you know, it's not like I have got the work and travel visa for Australia. These are all maritime visas that you have to get. So the Australian maritime visa was, it was all done online. Um, and I think that, that took like two months to come through. And I basically just got an email certificate saying that I had a visa. So yeah, most visas are gonna take a month to two months. Question eight, how much clothing are you allowed to take on a nine month contract or any contract? Um, basically as much as you can fit in your case. So usually the company will give you, obviously it depends on the airline, but it's normally about 23 kilos and you get two cases. So whatever you can fit in there, that's what you can take. I will say if you have a Siemens book, the airlines are normally a lot more lenient if you are overweight. So if you have like 25 kilos and you show that you work at sea, they're normally very lenient. So it is worth getting a Siemens book, but once again, don't get one unless your company tell you to get one. But if you do have one, it is worth showing with your passport when you check your luggage in. Of course, you can take whatever you can fit in those cases, but be mindful that you are gonna be probably sharing a very, very small space. So when it comes to clothes, the safe bet is you're gonna have half of a double wardrobe and you're gonna have two drawers. And I would always recommend taking like drawer dividers. You can get them from Ikea. But I think in a small space like that, it's really important to be organized. I mean, for me at least. Name some things that you would never go on a ship without. A single fitted sheet. Of course, the cruise line provide bedding, but the sheets that are provided on board the ship are flat sheets. I am horrendous at making the bed with a flat sheet. I know my strengths and I know my weaknesses and making the bed with a flat sheet. As on a bunk bed, especially if you're on top bunk, you have got no chance. A fitted sheet will make your life so much easier. So yeah, a single fitted sheet is something that I would never leave without. I actually take two, one to wash, one to wear or put on the bed. A universal adapter is a big must. It's worth spending a bit of money and getting a good one. A shoe rack that you can hang on the back of your cabin door. There's not a lot of space, so anything that you can take to create storage space, it's worth it. Earplugs, you're probably gonna be sharing a cabin and you don't know if you're gonna be in a noisy corridor, if your roommate's gonna snore. Just take some earplugs and hopefully you won't need to use them, but it's better to have some good ones than none. And yeah. There's a lot, but those are like what I would recommend you to take. Question 10, what do you have to do on your first day on board a cruise ship? Oh, first day on board a cruise ship. I think I've done a video on your first day. Um, it's intense, there's a lot, there's a lot going on. You'll get on board, you will have your medical papers checked, your visas, all of the paperwork that you have got. Then you'll have to fill in a few forms. After that, your manager most likely is gonna come and meet you and take you to your cabin. That's how it was before COVID. Now, your manager doesn't meet you because the crew manager who brings you on board will allocate you probably to a passenger cabin for you to quarantine. So, but before COVID, your manager will come and get you and take you to your crew cabin. And then 
you're given a few hours to basically unpack and get used to your cabin and then your manager will pick you up and take you to the mess and show you around you'll be given a tour of the ship and then yeah you'll go to work oh obviously you'll be shown all your safety procedures once again this was before covid because obviously if you're in quarantine you are not required to do anything in the event of an emergency so now you'll be shown your safety procedures when you come out of quarantine but usually that is what would happen on the first day so there is so much information to take like your first day is a whirlwind but you know the first day of any job is going to be a whirlwind so just try and take it in your stride don't worry if you forget absolutely everything that you have been told that day People are happy to repeat themselves and just try and take in as much as you can. It is going to take you a week to learn the layout of the ship. You are going to get lost, especially if it is your first contract. It's something that everyone goes through. Everyone knows that your first day on a cruise ship is like nothing else. It's crazy, but you'll be fine. You will be absolutely fine. Question 11. What training do you go through when you are on board? If you didn't do your SCCW training prior to joining the cruise ship, then you will do some form of an SCCW training when you are on board. You will do a lot of safety training, like so much safety training, you'll be sick of it. But obviously it's a necessity. There's social media training, sexual harassment training, bullying. You'll be trained on like the hierarchy. So if you have an issue, who do you go to? Who do you report to? That's all I can think of right now. But yeah, I mean, it's mainly the safety training um, that you will have a lot of throughout your whole contract. The first month on board, it's gonna be quite intense with the safety training. But after that, it kind of peters off and it's just a steady flow of safety training, which is mostly done in the crew drills. Question 12, can you choose your roommate? No. Now obviously when you get on board, you're not gonna know anyone. So you can't, there's no point choosing your roommate when you first got on board because you don't know anyone. So you're just put with, basically the, the person who you're replacing, you are gonna be in their cabin. So whoever they were sharing with, you're gonna share with. It will be someone of the same gender and most likely someone who is in the same department as you. Later into your contract, obviously you've got to know people you know who you like you know who you don't like can you choose your roommate then no <laughs> only if you really 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 don't get on with your roommate to the point where it's affecting your work performance let's say i live with lara and yulia and lauren live together i want to live with yulia and lauren wants to live with lara that would work because there's four of us that want to swap but if i want to swap and yulia and lauren are perfectly happy living together like, where am I gonna go? You have to have somewhere to go. So the only time it can really work is if I wanna live with Yulia, Lauren is leaving. So instead of Lauren's replacement coming in and living with Yulia, I can move to live with Yulia and Lauren's replacement will go and live with Lara. But it's also a lot of paperwork for your manager. So really, unless you are miserable, the answer is gonna be a no. And the likelihood of the scenario I just mentioned happening is quite slim. So you are gonna have to make do. Hopefully you get on with your roommate. If you don't, I have done a lot of videos on how to get on with your roommate. Um, so maybe give them a watch. Question 13, are your friends and family allowed to visit you while you are on board? They are allowed to book a cruise, absolutely, and they can see you that way. Another thing is before COVID, like when I was on P&O and we would dock in Southampton, crew members were able to get their family and friends to come on board for the day. So they could maybe have lunch on board and just have a look around the ship, obviously see their family member who works on board and then they would get off before the ship set sail. However, now because of COVID and keeping everyone safe and we want a bubble on board with no COVID, absolutely, that is not gonna happen. So the only way that your friends and family could come and see you on board is if they book a cruise. In your opinion, what is the hardest job on board? I think anyone who works in the F&B department, the food and beverage department. So barmen, waitresses and waiters, chefs, they, all work extremely long hours. They have very strict rules to abide by with like USPH, especially if they're in the States. And the second hardest, I would say, is housekeeping. They have a lot of cabins to clean. And it's not just cabins, it's keeping the whole ship clean. Like they clean the shops, they clean the spa, 
they clean like the atrium area so the housekeeping team are definitely a close second but yeah anyone who works in the F&B department will tell you it is hard and question 15 is what advice do you have for people starting their cruise ship contract in these times I am going to use one of my favorite quotes actually which is doing the hard things will make your life easier and it's so true like wearing the masks abiding by the rules it's going to keep you safe it's going to keep you out of trouble it's going to make your life easier and i think less you try and control it the more fun you'll have so working on cruise ships you had to be able to adapt because things change all the time especially with covid and the world we're in now things really do change all the time you know one day you might have shore leave the next day you might not one day everything's fine the next day you've been in contact with someone who might have covid so you have to quarantine one day you're allowed to use the guest gym the next day you're not because of restrictions and whatever so the more you can accept change and just kind of go with the flow as rubbish as it may be the easier your contract will be like if you're gonna get really agitated every time something changes you're gonna have a very very stressful contract so my advice would be go with the flow and doing the hard things will make your life easier but anyway guys i really hope you have enjoyed that video if you have then please press like and subscribe and also if you have any questions or anything that I've just said doesn't make sense, please let me know in the comments. But yeah, so I will see you on Sunday with the Q&A part two. I hope you have a fantastic rest of the day and I will see you on Sunday in the next video. Bye guys.